Hickok 45 here. Do I look like Dirty Harry with this? Well, let's start out smoking a little pot, whether I do or not. Oh, that went, you know what? He fell the other day. I'm sorry, I'm not gonna let him off the hook today. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> While we're here, let's put one on the target. Maybe two. And maybe a bowling pin behind it. A metal bowling pin. How about a real bowling pin? Yeah, 45 should do it. Yes, yeah, 45, not really dirty hairy. Uh, looks like a dirty hairy gun though, doesn't it? Let's uh, talk about that. Or let's don't. Let's let you figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is 45 Colt. That's the chambering for this revolver. Even though it looks just like this dirty hairy 44 Magnum. I mean, doesn't it? They're twins. They're almost twins. Not identical, but they're twins. And uh oh man, I can't believe I have one of these in 45 Colt after all these years. And if you watch the Sunday morning shoot around videos, you know a little bit more about it because I talked about it one Sunday. And I think I had this the next Sunday or two weeks later. Someone left, one of you left a message asking me uh, on a video or somewhere why I didn't have one. And uh, I, I don't know, I couldn't really answer it very well to myself. And so uh, this is how I answered it. I ended up with one in a couple of weeks. So it's your fault, it's your fault. It's my addiction, but it's your fault. You're the enabler, I guess. So anyway, uh, I'm gonna shoot this, talk about what it is. Some of you might not have even been aware that these fine Smith & Wesson, you know, double action revolvers back in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, whatever, were chambered in 45 Colt, which is kind of a cowboy cartridge, right? I mean, when you think of 45 Colt, you think of something beautiful like that, not something beautiful like this, maybe. <laughs> but anyway, so, yeah, and this is mine I purchased, but uh, okay. Uh, what can I tell you about this? Well, it's chambered in 45 Colt. That's the bottom line. That's what you really need to know. This one's chambered in 44 Magnum. It will shoot a 44 Special, but it's chambered in 44 Magnum. Says it right on the barrel. You've seen me shoot the Dirty Harry 44 Magnum many times, okay? Very similar. This barrel's a half inch longer, but other than that, I'll put him over there, okay? So, no more 44 Mag talk, sorry. It's all 45, 45 Colt. That's what we're gonna talk about here. Now why do I have a Colt single action army out here? Other than I'm always looking for an excuse for that, right? Just like I'm always looking for an excuse to have a nice revolver of any kind on the table. Uh, although we shoot a lot of polymer pistols, don't we? But we shoot a lot of these too. So, 45 Colt, we probably ought to uh, give some of you a little bit of a lesson, but can I shoot it before I do that? I'm gonna take a couple of shots with the factory. I was shooting some of my hand loads there. Been loading 45 Colt for a long time, since about, oh, 1973, I guess, four. And so, I have some, <laughs> I, well, I don't know about expertise, but I've loaded a lot of 45 Colt, and 44 Mag, and 44 Special, and 357, and a bunch of others. So we'll shoot some uh, Federal Factory Ammo, which is a little hotter than my hand loads, so let's blow something up. Like, how about this too? Oh, how about the cowboy? Dead center, whoa, it must be an accurate uh, revolver. Ah, and let's see if one will go out to the gong. Oh, it did. Let's see if one will go to the buffalo. All right. Actually, no question, it will go there. What it hits is the question, right? Dirt, leaves, steel. So that's six shots. It's a six shooter of all things. In case you didn't know that, it's a six shooter. Uh, big old cases coming out of there. I'm used to 44 cases or 357s coming out. Uh, I got a pan here for empties. So one thing I did here, uh, is I, I brought out, I think uh, one of the things I wanna make sure I don't forget to do is I shoot this and tell you a little bit about it. Yeah, I mean, basically it's just the same gun, in-frame Smith, chambered in 45 Colt instead of 44, or, you know, uh, 357 Magnum, the Model 27, the Model 28s, uh, Smiths were chambered in 357. And, uh, and these big bores, you know, we had 
these two, the 25, model 25, and then, you know, model 29 is the, the difference, okay? And one of the reasons I brought this out and everything, I want to talk a little bit about it is, uh, again, it's one of the reasons I mentioned in the Sunday shoot around that, that week that I, I had a little bit of a mental block maybe in the 70s and the 80s uh, against one of these in 45 Colt. I think I came close a time or two on them, but I just, I felt like in a 45 Colt, it needed to be a good old John Wayne gun type of gun, whether a Colt clone or a Colt or a Ruger, Vaquero, uh, some kind of single action like this. That's just, you know, when you say and think 45 Colt, that's what comes to mind, doesn't it? <laughs> a single action, it could be a Uberti or any Cimarron, any name, but you just think of a good old cowboy gun like this, you know, single action, very different. You, uh, you know, works like that. You gotta pull the hammer back before you can pull the trigger and shoot it. And you all have seen, hopefully, our videos on the Colt single action and others. Okay, and that's just, you know, I mean, that's the gun, the cartridge was born in 1872, 73, uh, in this firearm, the Colt single action, for example. And uh, so, you know, it just seemed that's where it needs to be, kind of what I was thinking. So I, I had kind of a mental block, I guess. And uh, plus, it's a little bit of a why not, or why, because if I have a 44, which I had, as you know, my 8 and 3 eighths early on in 44, and was reloading for it and all that kind of thing, I. I, I, you know, I just wasn't motivated to go to 45 in, in a Smith & Wesson necessarily. And uh, so I didn't, but I have made up for my negligence, okay, in recent months. And I am very happy to have one. <laughs> I mean, you know, as I think I said on that Sunday video, I don't know why exactly, because other than my mental block, because I love the Smith & Wesson vintage uh, double action revolvers like this, the big old end frames. Obviously, I owned several Model 29s back in the 70s and the 80s. Nickel plate, four inch, just different you know configurations, and shot a world of 44 Special, 44 Magnum. And uh, so, I really, really like these guns, and I really, really like the 45 Colt cartridge. I just never did marry them up, you know. So um, I apologize. I hope you forgive me. Okay. So now I've done it. I've, uh, you know, we've had the wedding. I've got one of my favorite types of revolvers in my favorite chamber, one of my favorite chamberings. And, uh, you know, so life is complete now. Uh, and they've been making these guns in 45, 45 Colt, through the whole century, basically, uh, Colt or Smith & Wesson. So these big old in-frame or large-frame revolvers have been around, you know, the uh, 1917, which I have, the, the Smith and 45 uh, ACP. Um, from Smith, they, they were more prone to make theirs in 44, you know, 44 Russian, 44 Special, and that through the early part of the 1900s. But then they chambered them in, in this, of course, and I guess was it in the 50s, I think, and then the 44 Magnum and everything. Uh, so, you know, it's not like it's a, a, some kind of weird ac anachronism. The 45 Colt's been, in, I've got, how many new service revolvers do I have? Three or four chambered in 45, and they're big, they're like end frames in 45 Colt, you know? So so anyway, I got over my mental block and now I have one. Now, one thing too, I learned, I didn't know, since I never had one, uh, the, uh, now this is a model 25.5, can't find, yeah, it's in there, 25.5. And I was a little confused, I was looking around for these, uh, wait a minute, a 25.4, what chamber is that? And, I, and I'd find a, one that looked pretty good, and I might buy that one. Yeah, that looks pretty good in the shape I want. Oh, wait a minute, that's, that cylinder looks like a 45 ACP. And I would, I would get confused, and I didn't realize, uh, believe it or not, because I had a model 2625, competed with it in 45 ACP back in the 90s. And, uh, but with these, made in the 70s, 80s, whenever, they were, uh, the dash five meant it was 45 Colt. The even dash numbers uh, indicated uh, 45 ACP and the odd numbers this is like in dash five may meant it's a 45 Colt okay longer you know difference between Colt and a ACP and so that's what they were I didn't even realize that okay and it seems like the 25.5 is one of the most common they must have made more of them during that period of time and that's what I got and then and again I wanted to educate you educate some of you a little bit 
you know, the 45 Colt, uh, some people call it the long Colt. Why do they call it that? Don't make too much fun of people that do that. It's a little bit different from like clip versus magazine. That's pretty cut and dried. It's either a clip or it's a magazine, okay? And, uh, but with 45 long Colt, I see comments sometimes when someone uses that term, phrase, people just jumping all over them. And, uh, you know, I, I try to call it 45 Colt, but it's so easy to see why that, that came about and, and why it still is to avoid, to avoid confusion back in the old days and in the new days and in the middle days, right? When uh, the Army adopted the 45 Colt, the single action, uh, you know, initially it was just the 45 Colt, I guess. And, and uh, but then Smith and Wesson came out with the 45 Schofield and that was what, 75? And, and it was adopted, They're not in gigantic numbers, but quite a few of them by the military. So they had that and they had the Colt Single Action Army, one chambered in 45 Schofield, one chambered in 45 Colt. Well, here's the difference. See, the Schofield, this is a Schofield round. I guess standing them up might be better, I don't know, but you see it, it, the case, look at the case. The case is shorter. See, here's a Schofield case and, and that's a Schofield in the middle there. So it's a shorter cartridge. All right, so we had two firearms adopted by the military and then pe that people also had, you know, civilians uh, eventually. Uh, and, and, and with the single action army, they had them pretty early on. The Schofield, I don't know, most of those early on, I guess, went to the military, but they, I don't know how many civilians had them early. But anyway, uh, so you had two 45s, one longer than the other. So, and, and easy to confuse, right? Any problem if you can feed the army. In fact, there'd be some outpost, you know, in New Mexico somewhere. Maybe all they have are Schofields, or they half of their their troops have the Schofield, and it needs the shorter cartridge. You cannot use the 45 Colt, the longer one in that that gun. They will not chamber all the way into the cylinder chambers. Okay, they get a shipment of a thousand or twenty thousand rounds. It's useless. They still have no ammo. They will not chamber in their Schofield. So that actually, that kind of thing actually happened, okay? And I think that's one reason, I forget what year it was, the military finally went to just the Schofield as their cartridge, because this would work in any of them, either one, because you have a longer chamber in the 45 Colt. Just like in this one, I can shoot the Schofield in or the long, it's kind of like 44 Special, 44 Magnum, okay? Uh, you cannot chamber a 44 Magnum any 44 Special, you know, revolver. The chamber's not long enough. So that's the kind of deal you had. And so you can understand why, and in fact, I read that the quartermasters uh, of the day, they they designated as 45 Long Colt, even though Colt and, you know, the manufacturers maybe didn't, okay? That makes sense. And then still today, even, you still have the 45 Schofield. Uh, around it, people load forward, buy them, shoot it. That's a factory round I bought somewhere. And you have the 45 ACP, which is shorter. It's even shorter than the Schofield. And nobody's going to probably try to put that in a you know Schofield or a Colt Single Action or not a, a big is issue. But you've got two or three really popular 45 uh, caliber handgun cartridges. And so, you know, it's just, I, I see on modern boxes of ammo sometimes, it'll actually say 45 long cold, 45 LC, you know, just to make it clear what that is. You know, a lot of new shooters, a lot of people not that familiar with that lecture I just gave you and, and confused you even more, right? And muddied the waters even more. And so I don't, I don't uh, begrudge them doing that, you know, more power to you. I try to call it 45 cold, that's what it is. But uh, so anyway, give people a break on that. And, while you're giving them a break, can I shoot a couple more shots? <laughs> so the 40, this is a cool gun. Some of you've had them. Tell us about it. Uh, if you've had the, you know, the uh, model 25, uh, whatever the dash would be, uh, N45 Colt, how you like it. I know that early on, some of the early models, they have, uh, they had a problem with the throat size. The, uh, the throat is the chamber, the bullet is in the, in, in the end of the chamber, put it that way, being too large. And that's not, uh, in, that doesn't enhance accuracy at all. If you're, because <laughs> your chamber, uh, it squeezes down to, you know, being tight out here towards the end. And if that's way oversized, then it, it really uh, it kills your accuracy. All right. So all that has to be the right size. It's going into the barrel, the, all that. So, and I, as I understand, they corrected that around 
80, 81, along in there. This one was made in 1980. And I read that the, the, the serial numbers beginning with N generally don't have an issue. I was glad to know that because I, I wasn't sure. <laughs> and this one seems to be plenty accurate. Okay, so, but anyway, just something to think about a watch for if you're buying one. Their earliest ones did have some, and it's probably random by gun. They didn't get their throats sized right. Some of the Colts had the same problem. Uh, well, let's just go over there and hit that ram. Uh, excuse me, let's shoot at it. I am just way overconfident sometimes. Well, let's shoot at it and not kill it. All right, took two to get him. How about, um, how about that pig on the same row? How? All right. Now those aren't, you know, minuscule targets, but I don't know, it seems accurate enough. Let's try a two liter right here. Boom. How about another one? <laughs> did he fire five or did he fire six? He fired five. So, let's miss with that last round. <laughs> okay. So, uh, what else did you want to know about it? So, like I say, when you think of 45 Colt, you generally think of single action. And uh, at least if you've been around firearms uh, very much at all, you, you tend to. But, uh, you know, so what? God, you know, especially these days, I might have had a little, but well, that didn't catch that case. I, I might have some excuse for, for uh, you know, my bias and everything uh, back in the day. But you know, these days, so many uh, guns are chambered in so many different cartridges. It, it's, uh, it's just not, uh, you know, it shouldn't be such big. Wow, that yeah, really, uh, really did get caught behind there. I don't know. What kind of case that is? It's a little FC, etc. It's not a star line. So, I don't know. You know, and there's a teachable moment there. One of the reasons that the 45 Colt was not chambered, there's also some political reasons, or a Colt versus Smith and Wesson, and different, there Winchester, and you know all that thing, but that going on too, but. But the 45 Colt, the early uh, 45 Colt cartridges, they had even a smaller rim than these do. And the 45 Colt doesn't have a big rim to catch because, you know, it head spaces. I mean, it catches right there on that rim. That's what keeps it from going further forward. It's not like a 45 ACP, the head spaces on the chamber mouth. Okay, that's what stops it in there. All right, because you don't have a, a rim protruding. Uh, so you do with these typical standard, you know, revolver cartridges. But uh, the rim on the 45 Colt, the originals was really small, a lot smaller than this. And so it, it uh, would struggle to be reliable in a lever gun, for example. Like the 1873, that's the big question. Why in the world wasn't it chambered in 45 Colt? Well, that's one of the reasons, you know, it's just you're picking up the cartridge and moving it around. Same with the Schofield type firearm. Uh, the star extractor wasn't reliable. And if you, we well, you saw what happened right there. What if I were in the middle of a gunfight? That's a problem. That's a problem. And that, that is one of the negatives of any revolver. That can happen. I'm not sure why it did there, but it can ha I don't have that problem very often, but uh, I have that problem with the Schofield uh, quite often because most of those today are chambered in 45 Colt for one reason, and you got a smaller uh, rim, as I was just saying. Even though they're chambered in 45 Colt now, most of them, they're not chambered in 45 Schofield. I don't think anybody does that, like the originals, they might. I uh, say so you can fire 45 Colt in it, like why would you not? You know, chamber for the longer cartridge. But uh, yeah, yeah, just that's kind of ill, uh, illustrates why uh, more firearms like the Schofield were not chambered in that, and uh, in the lever guns and everything. Okay. Because uh, th think about it, you didn't have that star extractor issue on the Colt. It really didn't matter. The way that case is coming out of there is you're pushing it out, you know, with that. So it's totally irrelevant, right? It's not catching on the case. It's actually going into the, the case and just pushing it out. Okay, so that wasn't a problem with that. Oh, boy, I should charge you off of this information. But I just never get around to it. Too many invoices to send out to all of you. So it's just the way it is. 
I so said, anyway, I'm happy with this, and I won't keep you all night. I just, you may not even be familiar, many of you may be very familiar with the Dirty Harry uh, revolvers and everything, and, and you know that this type of Smith & Wesson in smaller frames is chambered in 38 and 357, all those different. But you may not have been aware, many of you, that it actually was chambered, has been chambered for over 50 years in 45 Colt, the good old cowboy cartridge. Yeah, you might have been missing out, didn't even know it. So, oh, there's that one I missed. Can't let that happen again. Woo! And Mr. Cowboy got him double action. <laughs> yeah, we'll wrap up with some factory ammo. Was there anything else you wanted to know about it? Uh, I'll tell you one thing, you might be noticing that uh, the, uh, this one's pinned, it was made in 1980 pin barrel you can see just like this 44 uh, the 45s were not recessed in the cylinders okay that was to adjust the magnums okay like 38 special and 45 cold and, and the Smith and Wessons they were they were not recessed I don't think any of them were so it's not a time at first I thought it was a time period I do a little reminding research on that uh, none of these that the chamber the 45 Colt were ever uh, recessed the, the chambers. Okay, you know what I'm talking about there. Here we go, another lesson. You see the kind of the rim, you know, fits down in there like it would in, I don't have a 44 case, but you sell, it's got counterboard there the, so where the, the head of the case is flush, you know, with the face of the cylinder back there. Okay, so, so that's the way that's supposed to be and none of them were counterboard, all right? So, and barrel length, uh, I think they started out maybe with this chamber in the same uh, six and a half inch barrel. It was available at eight and three eighths, four inch, same, same barrel lengths by and large. And then they went to the six inch, uh, somewhere along the way, you get up in the upper 70s or 1980, you know, they went to six inch instead of six and a half. This is a little bit older uh, firearm, okay? But interesting, uh, you know, revolver to be chambered in this old uh, vintage cartridge that many of us really really like there's something uh, really cool about uh, enjoying a cartridge that has this kind of history you know still being loaded I know it's expensive and sometimes hard to find but still being loaded and fired by so many people 45 Colt goes back to 1873 uh, that's a long time folks I remember it but I can barely remember it so you yeah, know obviously you know Federal still makes 45 Colt. They'd better, they better not quit making this vintage cartridge. So let's fire these off and uh, make y'all go home. Let me do a shooting tree here. Let's shoot the a limb off of that thing. Yeah, let's shake that baby off. Oh, nice. And I see a bowling pin that needs to be rolled. Yeah, let's go double action on the tombstone. Boom. Well, let's reserve that last round for my favorite target, Mr. Gong. Oh no, did I miss? I gotta put one more in, I'm sorry. How did I do that? How did I do that? I'll just put one in, I'll be confident. Okay, the Smith cylinder turns counterclockwise, so when I cock it, it should come up. No, all right, that's better. I must have held a little low or something there. Okay, or maybe high, or possibly it was a windage issue, one of the four. So, uh, good old model 25.5 Smith & Wesson, throws out some big bullets. 45 is actually 45 caliber. You know, I've gone over that too with you before and did not invoice you, but a 45 is 452 or 454, you know, thousandths and everything. Whereas 44 is actually a 43 caliber. So you, uh, you have a, a bigger bore with 45. I mean, I know you would, but most people probably think it's just one caliber bigger. It's really a couple. Okay, if that makes any sense, probably doesn't. So uh, hope you learned something today. You probably didn't, but glad you came out anyway. Life is good. Uh, it's a long walk from where I had to shoot that.
Oh man. Oh hey, didn't see you guys there. Since you're here, I want to let you know about our friends over at Talon Grips and Ballastall. TalonGunGrips.com. Check out everything they have over there. You can get lots of different grips, the stick-on grip textures for your handguns and rifle grips. So go check them out. Also Ballastall. They're a firearms lubricant or anything else you might need lubricating. Uh, it's water soluble and non-toxic. Been using it on the compound and cleaning all of our guns. It's a cleaner and a lube for over 10 years. So Ballastall, Talon Grips, definitely check both of those companies out. And also while you're on the internet, don't forget to go to Hickok45.com. You can also find us on Facebook, Hickok45, Twitter, Hickok45, Instagram, The Real Hickok45. And also I have an Instagram page where I post behind the scenes stuff and different things like that. John, J-O-H-N underscore H-I-C-K-O-K-4-5 on Instagram. And uh, the next thing you have to do is watch more videos.